Now back to the show. This is The Law Show on CL 650. Welcome back to The Law Show this Sunday morning here on CIL 650. I'm Sterling Fox, producer uh, Dwayne Bishop with uh, the tunes in the background. Illegal Alien, a uh, good old Genesis song, uh, keeping the wheels turning this morning. Gordon Maynard and Rudy Kisher are with us. Immigration lawyers, birth, both rather, with Maynard Kisher Stoichevich, uh, a law firm downtown on Hamilton Street and online at VancouverLaw.ca. And uh, birthright uh, is what we're going to talk about next. We're talking about citizenship this morning in the wake of all of those heartfelt, wonderful, warm ceremonies we witnessed on the tube rather just a few days ago on Canada Day. So an excellent opportunity to sort of renew our our sense of citizenship and for those of us who take so much of it for granted to understand <coughs> how many of the rules have changed, how much the process has changed in recent times, and maybe just to refresh our, our attitudes and our minds on some of the basic rules. And uh, it was I was reminded, not so gently either, I hasten to add, during the break, uh, that uh, we, we we neglected to include birthright as a as a as an uh, element for discussion on the basics of citizenship. And Gordon sort of chided me for it uh, because uh, <laughs> gently, uh, well, gently, 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 very very kindly. And he's a hockey player just <laughs> recovering from a broken leg. He ha- had to be gentle there. Uh, for uh, but it was about uh, I think we all take for granted that if you're born in Canada, you're automatically a Canadian citizen, and that's still the case, is it not? Absolutely. Okay, so how have the rules, what other perceptions of birthright? For example, Rudy raised the case uh, a second ago. What about a person from another country who wants to have a child uh, in Canada? So they book a hotel room at VGH from wherever they are, and they come over, rather large, one would assume, and, and, and they have a child in Canada, now that foreign person has a little Canadian, right? Is that kid still automatically Canadian because he was born uh, in our country? Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, the uh, Foreign I mean, parents? Foreign parents. If you look at what happened on Wednesday, on, on Canada Day, the people that were there were, they had gone through an application process where they were getting a grant of citizenship. So they had filled out the forms, made the application, paid the fee, taken a test, sure. put their time in here. Um, myself, I was born in Canada. I am under the citizenship automatic. I, I By birth, I am a Canadian citizen. Right. A citizen. Now, that is not... Every country has different rules for citizenship. So, for example, a foreigner born in Japan most likely will not get Japanese citizenship. That, that, that's, you know, countries from the older world, uh, you know, unlike countries that were founded on immigration recently, right. tend to be much more likely to sort of be based on citizenship is based on being born, being from a lineage, right? A, right. a blood lineage connected to the country. Uh, in now, Canada, this is something that, I, mean, I don't really mean to interrupt, but this yeah. is something that Canadians, I, I don't think, would understand. We assume that because we do things a certain way, and we're pretty fair, yeah. um, well, everybody else must be doing it exactly the same, and that's just not the case. Yeah, and, and it's very, I mean, Stark, you know, for, for an example, uh, we have a, uh, you assume that because your parents are, Canadian citizens mm-hmm. that uh, if you know that you would be a Canadian citizen, but under our laws, it also depends. They've changed recently. Um, this what we call the second generation born abroad will no longer be a Canadian citizen. So you can imagine a case where somebody's working abroad, they have a child, that child born abroad will be a Canadian citizen. Let's assume both the parents are Canadian citizens. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, until recently, until the re- the recent changes, if that child remained abroad, didn't come back to Canada, had a child, and that child would be the assumption would be that that child was now a Canadian citizen. With parents and grandparents. Grandparents right. being Canadian. But not the case. Not the case anymore. The, the rules have changed dramatically. And, and that's a very, so that second generation born abroad is no longer automatically a Canadian citizen. Okay. That's very different from countries like Germany, where you can be gone, for example, for 500 years, having lived, you know, being ethnically German, living, let's say, in Russia or Romania or someplace, would be allowed to apply for citizenship and return to Germany as being an ethnic German. We no longer have that idea in Canada. They have to apply for citizenship in Germany, or is it from birth? They they would have to make that application. Yeah. Right. So now, Gordon, uh, I'm, I'm, and I'm glad you raised the matter of birthright because again, we assume so much in Canada because if we're born here, it's a done deal, and right. for for all our kids, unless, as it turns out, 
we and you uh, at uh, Maynard Kisher Stoichevich deal with a lot of corporations and a lot of professional people who move around the world as part of their careers. It's what they do. So, and Canadians, of course, are as mobile as any other people in the world. So we we got Canadians all over the place making big bucks and having fun and raising families. So the uh, if mom and dad, both Canadians, are in France or wherever, and they have a child, that is that child, Rudy. Uh, automatically a Canadian because mom and dad are, is that child also automatically a dual being born on foreign soil? Well, they automatically have their Canadian citizenship, right, right. and it would depend on the country where they're born. Ah, so, so Canada has nothing to do with the dual has half. Nothing no, to do. Canada we, can make a rule that says people born in Canada are Canadian citizens, mm -hmm. but they can't make a rule for other countries. True. So every country has its own rules right. about who is a citizen from birth. In Canada, the rule is people who are born in Canada are citizens, People who are first generation born abroad are Canadian citizens. If your if one of your parents was a Canadian citizen mm -hmm. and you are born abroad, then you are a Canadian citizen as sure. well. As long as your parent or one of them was also born in Canada. Ah, oh, okay. okay. If your parent got their citizenship because they were born abroad, then it's too late for you. Interesting stuff. Now, is this recent? Now, these these that change modifications. Was okay. Yeah, but it's, but it's important to remember in this, in terms of dual citizenship, there's, you know, in the past, I think it was until '76, you weren't as a Canadian allowed generally to have dual citizenship. Yes. Yeah. And in the United States, I think it was until 1996, Americans weren't allowed to have dual citizenship, mm -hmm. right? Except under certain circumstances. So a lot of countries, Japan, China, restrict, and and India, for example, restrict citizenship that you can only have. Once the, the idea being that if you go into battle, if we're at war, we want to make sure your loyalty is <laughs> right. with us and that yeah. you are basically our subject. And Canada has a more, you know, a more modern view of, you know, it's it, people can have two allegiances. Right? So uh, and also, also more. India has rules like if you want to own land in India, Inherent you have land. to be an Indian citizen. OK, yeah. so there's a lot of expatriate Indians who live abroad worldwide, but don't take out foreign citizenship because, because they, they don't own want to land give up back the land home, that sure. they owned or, or even worse, they, they might own land, so they can't inherit the land. So their father's back home, and they won't take us because they, they won't be able to inherit the land that they know they, they would have a right to. Interesting stuff. Yeah. So on the matter of dual, dual citizenship, you're only a dual citizen if the comp country in which you were born grants you citizenship yes. by virtue, as we would, by virtue of your simply having been born there. Or being born of an American parent, for instance, in Canada. Okay. All right. So in Canada, though, for people, uh, for any person, any small person born here is automatically a Canadian. Yes. Full stop, period. Full right? stop. Yeah. So you have cases, as we were discussing during the break, of, of which people organize their affairs such that they can give birth to their child in Canada, so that child will receive automatically Canadian uh, citizenship. Canadian now, citizenship. Is, that, is that gaming the system, Rudy? Or is it legal? Is it kind of I mean, shady? What's the deal? I, I mean, I, I think it is. Uh, is it gaming? Yeah, it's you're, you're planning to try and get your child Canadian citizenship. What's your connection to Canada? Uh, you know, uh, maybe a week in Canada at the hospital of VGH. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. think there's a lot of connection to Canada. Um, why do we allow it? I, I think the, you know, the underlying premise is that we don't want people to be stateless. So right. the idea is that if you're born in Canada, you're 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 you know you're part of our Canadian family, and you have a right to remain here to to prevent situations where people don't know uh, where they should be getting their passport or don't have a right to live someplace. I mean, statelessness, while it doesn't uh, happen to a lot of Canadians, is a is a problem worldwide for for certain minorities. Um, so that is sort of the idea behind it. The problem with it is with international travel becoming as easy as it is. People can now get on a flight and say, "Okay, you know, I, I'm going to sit over here." And, and you know, it, it's not uncommon for uh, some Korean tour groups to organize, you know, a tour to come over here and have the baby here, and they'll arrange the whole package, negotiate with the hospital. The price is paid, sure, yeah, right. Um, and they're, from what I can see under the, under the regulations, they're not in breach if they're being honest about their intentions and they arrive at the airport and say, "I'm going to have here's a letter from the hospital. My plan is to have the baby. Um, I've got insurance to cover if there's complications." The immigration guard really has to let them in. Now, the, the government has talked about this being an issue, and uh, they didn't make it on this round of citizenship changes, but uh, I think it's still a live issue. The, the, the reality is very few people do this. Right. I mean, most women want to be close to home when of they're course, having the baby. They want to be close to their mother, and they, they want to be in a nice environment they're familiar with, and it doesn't happen that often. So to change the rules for a small amount, the government seems to 
you know, put it on the back burner for but now. But where it, where it feels like we're we're being gamed here by slick foreigners, uh, Gordon, is that this would then be seen as well. I've got a little Canadian baby now, so gosh. That's my ticket to to coming into Canada too. Well, a family that, a family member having is Canadian. A, having a baby in Canada doesn't give you any ability to be here or remain here. If you are lucky enough that your child grows up, establishes residence here, meets the qualifications for sponsorship, then ultimately after the age of eighteen, they can apply to sponsor you to come to Canada. But there's no automatic uh, parent process. thing that because I had this little little nope, baby here, then the door's open for me too. Somebody's nope. got to look after him. Yeah. Nope. 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 Interesting. Yeah. Well, I'm glad the, to hear that. The position of the government is if you want your baby to stay here, that's fine. You make the necessary arrangements so you can't stay here. Yeah, right. Well, again, I, I think, Rudy, this is, this is such a good show to do this morning because there are a lot of popularly held misconceptions. I think we, we, immigration is such a confusing issue. And for those of us who were fortunate enough uh, and blessed enough to be born here, uh, we make a lot of assumptions, and many of them are just flat out wrong, aren't they? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it, it takes, uh, unfortunately, uh, immigration, I think, is, is the fastest changing area of law next to sort of tax and criminal. It's a very political field, and therefore it changes a lot, and it's used by the government, uh, you know, to sort of uh, to, to gain votes in their base and, and make sure they're satisfying their base. Right. So it gets used quite a bit. Okay, I'm going to take a quick break here, and uh, we'll carry on. I'm going to talk. I'm going to, the, the story we talked about this on the last program. The story about the uh, the uh, mom from the Philippines who was going to bring in her young uh, teenage daughter who had she's deaf, uh, and uh, the the government of Canada turned the application down flat, saying this this young woman is going to be a tremendous burden to the uh, the healthcare system, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Slam, the door gets closed, and mom's worked in Canada forever and a day, and she's going, what? I've done everything right, <laughs> and so it actually has a happy ending. We'll tell you more about that when we return here on CIL 650. There's more of the show still ahead. This is The Law Show on CIL 650.